गुड मॉर्निंग गुड आफ्टरनून गुड इवनिंग हाउ आर यू टूडे यू वेलकम आई लव यू यू आर माइन आई एम योर्स I love you and I believe you love me. God is good and he loves us. It is wonderful today that we are going to speak about God's love, God's care, God's everything towards man, towards us, towards me and towards you. May God bless you with the blessings that are bigger than you that are taller than you deeper than you wider than you that your life becomes more beautiful the greatest miracle is my someone today God is a good good God a wonderful one God is so good especially when he is dealing with man I love God and God loves me he loves you too All things work together for good to those who love God. And uh things are going to turn around with you. God loves man. It is so amazing. Sometimes I wonder why he loves us so much. Why he takes all his time thinking about us. why he makes sure we breathe we eat we drink we dress we sleep he watches over us as if he is our security guard god loves us so much and he loves us anyway today we are going to expound deeper on that let's pray heavenly father we love you you look good You are beautiful. You are handsome. The most valuable thing, the most valuable being you are. We love you, Father, and we are ready for more of your love today. Here we are. Speak to our souls. Reveal to us how deep you love us. How deep you care. how deep you're concerned how deep you love us in jesus name amen today i have come to speak to people who struggle to belong today i've come to speak to people who wonder who they are what they will ever be i've come to speak to a people who think that anything called love is far away from them the greatest miracle dear viewer today i am pastor paul makanga and you are your names there is a reason i am a man there is a reason you were man there is a reason you were woman There is a reason I am short. There is a reason you are tall. There is a reason I look black. <laughs> there is a reason you look white. There is a reason there is a reason. That reason is because God loves us. You will understand as we go on. Let me read Jeremiah chapter 1. Jesus I love you. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4 and verse 
Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto nations. Dear viewer, view me today. Sometimes life defines us awkwardly. In most cases, situations name us the names that do not belong to us. Sometimes problems form us and transform us into a different kind of beings that God never intended, that God never created, that God never formed. We are a form formed by our former. We are something made by our maker. We are a product manufactured in heaven. We are not formless things. We are formful things. If that word is there, formful. <laughs> Uh, I love English <laughs> because I speak it in the most fakest way. <laughs> Sometimes I invent my own language, my own words. Now, formful. We are not formless. We are formful. We are formed by our form in heaven. We are product produced and manufactured in heaven. We have a creator. Before you went into the belly, God knew you. You are not a coincidence. You are not a mistake. I've seen people and I've come across a lot of people who struggle to belong. Some are married women who struggle to have grandparents. Some are people who have never seen their dad, who have never seen their mom. <coughs> Excuse me. Some are people who have lived in families but lacking a certain kind of love. Maybe a kind of love, a love, a father's love or a mother's love. Some have grown up to a shock, they are told that those people they thought were their parents are not their parents indeed. Some have grown up in families where parents are addicts, drug addicts, drunkards, awkward parents. <clears throat> Dear friend viewing me today, if you are one of those people, and if you know anyone going through that, who is struggling to, to belong to a clan, to belong to a family, some are having all their parents, but they are rejected in their families. When you go through a lot, sometimes you can be tempted to think that maybe you a mistake that maybe you were coincidence, that maybe you were not expected. And actually, some of us were not expected. Like me, my mom tried to abort me several times. She did everything that I come out of her womb, and by God's grace, I refused. To them, I was a mistake. To them, I was unexpected. To them, I was unwanted. To them, I was unplanned before. To them, 
I was a bastard <laughs> to them. They were not ready to have me. And I grew up. Whenever they looked at me, especially my mom, she remembered what she went through and she put all that blame on me. Do you know what she went through? Can I tell you? She was raped to have me. My dad raped her <laughs> to have me. So, if you were a woman, you understand. The pain, the shame, the agony, the regret, whatever she went through. But my dear, regardless of how we came, God knew us. I understand you are there. His mom was raped, but he's laughing. <laughs> I'm not laughing at her. <laughs> no. I'm laughing because God loves me anyway. <laughs> My mom was raped to have me. And yet tomorrow was her wedding day. She was raped in the night when tomorrow, the next day was her wedding day. <laughs> then my real dad had come also on the function. You know, the, the, especially those villagers, they begin, they make a function at night, then tomorrow. He left her, she had gone out for bathroom. The devil wanted her dead so that she, she misses her wedding. My mom kept quiet. She didn't fight. And boom, I came. Tomorrow they wedded her. She had the birth of me. And they thought everyone thinks where she is is my dad. But he is not. <laughs> you know life, life is awkward sometimes. <laughs> ah, Jesus is a good God. <laughs> Jesus is a good one. But regardless of how I came, I live and I am loved by my father, in heaven, God intended you and he intended your family and he intended the way you came and he intended where you are. He intended our colors, our races, our continents, our countries, our cities, our villages, our families. Maybe where you grew up in a foster home, in a certain governmental system. Maybe you grew up on a street. Maybe your parents separated. Or they died while giving birth to you. Maybe they raped your mom like me. Maybe they didn't expect you. They didn't rape them, but they didn't expect you. They had not planned it for you, and they normally put that on your head. Regardless of what you went through growing up, regardless whether you have a dad, a mom, or not, regardless whether you are still searching for your dad or for your mom, regardless whether your dad left your mom, this is what God is saying to you. Before I formed you in the belly of your mom, I knew you. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you. And I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. My mom did everything she could to have me out because she feared. How was she going to explain that? How do you explain 
that on the night when you were you was going to you were going to wed me honey on the night of our wedding that man who raped me the man is on the village the man who raped her is on the village almost neighbors i look exactly like him <laughs> exactly like him if you find him somewhere you may think i am the one the only difference is the hair his is gray mine is black but even if you are dumb and stupid and f- the fullest fool you will just look at me and him and say ah, ah, that is his dad nothing we resemble in everything <laughs> but i'm in another home <laughs> I mean another family. <laughs> Dear friend viewing me today. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what is sabotaging your identity. I don't know what is killing your joy, what is destroying your love. Before you went into the belly, God knew you before he formed you. It is God who forms us in our mother's wombs. What is the meaning of forming? You know we begin as sperms and as eggs. The mother produces the egg or the ovary, the ovule, whatever it is. The father produces the sperm in a watery form. Watery sliding Siripare form. Very small, very tiny, in particles. Then God begins to form us. Then we increase, we cease to be sperms and eggs. We become a formless blood. Full of water, full of blood. Then with time, we become a formed blood. Then the nose begins to come in our body parts begin to form they don't just form it is god who forms us it is god who formed me it is god who formed you in your mother's womb you're hating yourself for nothing and you're struggling to belong for nothing parents are just stewards of their children and as we know some stewards are not responsible enough stewardship is not easy it is not easy that's why we call raising children parents do not own children god owns them parents are just stewards so when or if your dad refused the stewardship and went out of the family it was his problem and actually we don't know what transpired there even the reports your mama is giving you the reports your mom is giving you might be wrong You don't know exactly what happened. She might be telling you your dad was evil, was a monster. You know, women have such kinds of names. They normally call those men names. He was a monster. Son, he was a monster. Then they struggle, they do three jobs a day. You don't know exactly what happened. You don't know why he left and you don't know why she left. Stop blaming them. You haven't heard their story. And even if their story was true, some of them were young, they didn't know what to do. Some of them were addicts, they didn't know what to do because addiction replaces your mind with those drugs. 
We didn't decide which parents should be our parents. God did. That's why I told you he intended your parents. Stop blaming yourself. Why was I born in this kind of family? I used to ask God that such a question because my parents were very poor. I always ask God of all families, why did you allow me to come through such a poor family? But things are different now. God intended the village, the city, the country, the continent in which you should be born. He intended the womb. He chose that one. There were many wombs. Just like when Jesus was being conceived, there were many virgin girls during the days of Mary. But God chose Mary. Why? Because he's God. God chose your mom and he chose your dad. You will never have another dad and you will never have another mom. Love them anyway. They are the only ones. And even if they are dead and you are an orphan, Today, I've come to introduce to you a loving, heavenly, eternal Father. He loves us, us without our approval. I said that yesterday. God loves us without our approval, even without our recognition. He took time to form you in the womb. He knew you from heaven. He was forming you into the womb. Why? Because in heaven, you were only spiritual. And on earth, he wanted you to be both spiritual and physical. He was making the physical part of you in the womb of your mom. You can imagine, God did not send angels to form you in the womb. That's how important you are. It is God's work. You are God's work. We are God's work. When I was beginning, I said, I sometimes wonder, why does God love us so much like that? God took time to take care of the sperm of your dad to make sure it is joined with the egg of your mom. I'm going to use that language here today. The egg. These words of, of you, of leave, they disturb me. So I'm going to use egg. God joined those two eggs. The sperm, your daddy's and your mom's. You, he, he took time. He visited your mother's womb to form you. You know those wombs are not as small as they look. Even God defeats them. From day one up to nine months. Even if you were. Even if you came before nine months. God intended that. It's a sign of speed. It was prophetic to you. That God is not going to be doing things. In a normal way. In this known way. No. God is going to be speeding your things. That's why you came speeder. Earlier than us. God intended your dad. He intended your mom. Don't hate him for that. Because he was wishing. And willing the best for you. That best from God. Is still available. Regardless whether you grew up on, on in, in foster, foster homes, streets, and whatever you went through, it doesn't matter you went through all that abuse, sexual and emotional, whatever it is, my dear. God took time. He came and stayed in the womb of your mom for nine months, or for the months you spent in the womb of your mom. I was not aborted because God was there. I don't know how many times my mom tried, but she tried severally. I didn't come out. Even in a hospital, they refused. They refused. God was in my mother's womb, holding me in his hands. 
when they throw in those drugs and whatever, he hides me in the palm of his arms. Then the drugs will go off and I survived. It, it happened to you too. I'm not saying it is okay to have no dad. I'm not saying it's okay to have no mom. It is not okay. We all want to have a family where we belong. We need to have parents which our kids will call grandees, grandmom, granddads. I understand. We need it. But my dear, if you haven't gotten it, or if it was sabotaged, don't hate yourself. You are still of the same value. God had before he sent you into your mother's womb. He first made you in heaven. Then he brought you in a sperm egg form into the womb of your mom. God never left the womb of your mom until when you were born. That's why even, even when she got sick, she, di you, she didn't have a miscarriage. Dear friend, if God never intended you, you would have turned into a miscarriage. If God never intended you, you would have come, become a miscarriage. You can imagine God the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit living their throne in heaven empty for nine months in the womb of your mom, taking care of you, forming you a girl, forming you into a man or into a boy. And on the day of your delivery, they are there to direct the way and when you land into the stewards, into the hands of your stewards, your mom, your dad, then God goes back to the throne. He doesn't leave you alone. He sends you two angels, your guardian angel, and an angel that records everything you do from the day you were delivered. You see, God cares for your life. God loves you so much, he does not want to lose you. You are all his life. You are not his best. You are not just the best of his life. You are all his life. He cannot breathe because of you. He cannot blink, blink because of you. He doesn't sleep and he does not slumber because he loves you. He cares for you. He makes sure you breathe every day. You don't know where you get that supply. We just literally know and simply know it is God who gives us the breath. We don't know how it enters us. If science is true, they tell us it is, you know, the system in our bodies, the lungs, the heart, the whatever. Those things also function because God is available. They function because God, because God cares. God loves you regardless of who you are and regardless of who your parents are and regardless whether you have them or whether you do not. Dear friend watching me today, stop blaming yourself Stop hating yourself. Stop calling yourself a coincidence. Stop calling yourself a mistake. Stop calling yourself a bastard. Stop asking questions to God as to Stop asking God questions as to why He created you. God still has that value. You know you can't leave your throne. Especially praise the name of the Lord. Are you still there? Say Amen. God still has that value for you. Praise the name of the Lord. You didn't know where to pass on the day of your delivery. And you didn't know how to come normally. In fact, you wanted to stay there. That's why babies resist. Push becomes push, 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 push. Do you know why? Because they are pushing you out. You don't want to come out. And God says, uh -uh, we are out of here. Go out and let us out. Before you get out of your mother's womb, we are staying here forever. Baby, go out. We have formed you into what we wanted. That value is still available. You are all God's life. 
He gives in his life for you. In fact, he is God because of you. You can imagine, why doesn't God sleep? Why doesn't he slumber? <laughs> no, he doesn't, you know, even he doesn't blink. Because he doesn't want anything wrong to happen to you. And even if the devil tricks you into wrong and into problems, God makes sure he uses them for good. He turns curses into blessings. Do you know why he does that? Because he didn't create you with the curses. When the devil inflicts his curses on you, then Jesus makes sure he makes them like magically. As if it's magic. He, he turns them into, you know, into blessings. Into your original blessing. Dear friend, you belong. To God. God is your father. He is your mother. He is your grand. He is your auntie. He is your everything. He is your everyone. When people have refused to give you love, turn to God, he has it in plenty. If they say you don't belong to them, there is someone who says he belongs to me, she belongs to me, and his name is Jesus Christ, and his Father God the Father, and the Holy Spirit on earth is here because God loves you. Dear friend watching me today, I give God the glory. Why? Because you are his value. That value, that purpose, you are the greatest miracle God intended when your parents slept together. He, he influenced them to sleep together sexually so that you can be produced. In heaven, he had manufactured you. But on earth, he needed managers. Praise the name of the Lord. In heaven you were already like who you are. Have you ever had a dream? That person you see in your dream is the real you. That's how you were in heaven. You were like that. You were like that. Before you came into, the, into your mother's womb. God made sure he gets managers to reproduce you into the physical form. And God was successful when he looks at you. When God looks at you, he says, hey, see my product. See my product. I was successful making him. I was successful making her. God is glad. He is happy, celebrating. Rejoicing in his heart. Happy. Jubilating. Why? Because you came out to the best according to how he wanted you. You came out to the way he wanted you. You are his intended plan. You were predestined. You see, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. Do you know what that part means? That I sanctified thee? He says I was successful. My intentions were fulfilled. I am satisfied. The person I wanted came out the very way I wanted. It doesn't matter some of your, 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 your bodies. Your body parts are deformed. It is okay. Actually, you are a spirit. You are not a body. It is just a body deformed. If a car hits somewhere and it gets some deformations, does it cease to be a car? No. Having a deformed hand, a deformed brain, as they tell you, a, a deformed leg, it does not sees you from becoming a person and you people having those people those are also people my dear start treating them the same way as you treat the deformless people 
They are not deformed. God intended them. He's going to use them. He's going to bless them to the shock of people. Because God wants glory. God wants to bless some people. And other people say, wow, how? Even that one? Yes. Yes. God intends everything. He doesn't matter. He has a special case. Like people say that they need special care because they have special cases. Before God, there is no special case. God sanctified you. Meaning, before you came out, before your day of delivery clicked, God said, He first checked you. For example, if they finish making a car, they put it on the road, they try it before they put it on market to see whether there is nothing wrong with the car they have made. After becoming concussure that it is ready for the road, then they put it on market. Dear friend, before you came out, God sanctified you. In other words, he first tried you. He first checked to see whether every intention of his was fulfilled and satisfied. That is why we say we, we are expecting. Mothers expect their babies on the day of delivery. And you mothers who go to hospitals to remove babies before their actual times, you are doing it wrong. You are fighting God's work. You know some ladies fear to push babies. They make appointments. So long as they know that will be the ninth month. Lord Jesus, help these ladies understand. It is not all about the ninth month. It is all about the actual time, the actual hour, the actual minute, and the actual seconds. And that's why they even record those hours. The date, the hours, the day. And the minutes and seconds on birth certificates. God first checks. Is it the right time? Will it be the right hour? On the same seconds we want. That's why to some ladies they spend two minutes in delivery. Or in labor ward. Others spend hours. Because they went there before. The actual intended time of God. God intended your actual time of delivery. He first checked and tried you on the road. To see whether he, when he brings you. To see whether when he brings you on earth. You will do exactly what he intended you to do. That is what it means. That before you came forth. Out of the, your mother's womb. I sanctified. You. I first checked, I first tried you, I first made sure you were ready to go. Praise the name of the Lord. May God heal everyone watching me today of every pain you have, be it an emotional pain, be it whether you need healing. May you receive your physical healing now. May your soul be healed, may your spirit be healed, may your body be healed. I heal you in the name of Jesus. Be healed and be healed right now. I command that pain to go and that sickness never to come back again. In Jesus' name. You are not a mistake. You are God's greatest miracle. When God looks at you, he sees his wisdom. When God looks at you, he sees his knowledge. He sees his understanding. He sees his greatness. He sees his supremacy. Do you know dummies? These things they make they, that look as if they are people in hospitals are not in hospitals, or in some hospitals also. In shopping malls, those things they put there, you look at it as if it is a man or a woman. They dress them nicely. They used to make me jealous. Why? I used to dress very bad. And I would see those dummies fully dressed, very well, neat, smart, and clean. And I said, Ye God, ye God be fair. Even in them is dress better than me. <laughs> but God heard my prayer. Praise the name of the Lord. 
God, when, when he looks at you, he sees he's his supremacy. He says, nobody can create a human being. And you will be perfect as you, my girl, my boy that I created. God is happy he made you. God is happy you are alive. God is happy he is your dad, he is your father. Would you please allow me today to ask you to shift? Your expectations and your love to God shift God above your parents. If you're looking for your dad, I pray that you find him. If you're looking for your mom, I pray that you find her. If you're looking for a good relationship with your parents, I pray that God gives you one. If you're struggling to know who actually is your dad, please, I pray that God blesses you. But I don't want that to quench your joy, to start making you a regret, to make you regret. Maybe I was a mistake. Why ain't I have my dad? Why ain't I have my mom? Why did she die while giving birth to me? Why did he leave us with my mom? And most of you are so angry with your dads. They even fear to show forth. Because when they come, instead of loving them, you will begin with questions. If you cared, why did you leave? If you loved us, why did you leave? You don't know what you went through. You never came to my birthdays. You didn't attend my games. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't. That's not the right way to reconcile. The right way is to forget the past and move on. You begin afresh. Like you didn't know them in the first place. Did you know your parents in the first place? You didn't. You just came. You found them. If he comes back, if she comes back, pretend like you pretended when you were a baby. She pushed you out of her, but you learned to call them your dad. You learned to call them your mom. It was fresh. It was afresh. You just learned to know there is a dad. There is a mom. You didn't have them in the first place. They were managers of God. Stewards. God just gave them a responsibility to, 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 to raise you. You have also fa- have ever failed somewhere of a certain responsibility. Praise the name of the Lord. Responsibility is not easy. Stewardship is not easy. Managing is not easy. It requires a certain wisdom, a certain knowledge, and a certain and a certain knowledge and a certain skill. To some people, they do not they do not have those skills. Haven't you ever found a mom beating up a baby? A three year old as if she's beating a fellow mature girl. They are there. Who haven't understood yet that these are babies. However much I beat them, they are still babies. They will do the same again. They will even forget you beat them once for that. They will do it again happily. Haven't you ever seen a baby putting all wheat all over herself? She goes on her mother's makeup table and she feels herself everything. And she comes to you looking awkward but happy. She has done makeup. She's a baby. But some parents do not have that knowledge. They beat up the babies as if they are beating up hooligans. They call them all sorts of names. You dog, you pig, you hooligan, you a monster. I don't understand. He is a baby for God's sake. You just learn to love those parents. So when your dad comes back, when your mom comes back, Start learning to love them like you used when you were just a baby. When they fed you on their breasts, you were just learning to call them mom. You even struggled to call them mom, dad, on the first time you spoke. Mama, dada, dada. Instead of dad, you said dada. Praise the name of the Lord. 
But even if they don't come, there is a heavenly father who brought you here. Those we are just stewards. I'm not asking us to despise our parents. No, we didn't. I, we, we shouldn't. I began by giving you my testimony. They raped my mom on her day, on, on her night, of, on the night of her wedding. You can imagine how she felt after being raped. I understand she went back, washed herself, gathered herself, cried a little bit for hours, secretly in the room. Then tomorrow she gathered herself, pretended nothing happened at night. Do you think she has ever forgotten that horrible scene? No, even today. She has never said of it. I just knew about it. She hasn't told me. I know. Do I hate her? No. Do I hate the other man who raped her? No. Why did it happen like that? We don't know. Should I hate myself? Who told you? Why? Did I create myself? Did I choose my parents? Did I choose my village? Did I choose my color? Did I choose my nation? Did I choose my continent? No, I didn't. Did I choose God? No. He chose me. He chose my parents. He chose it the way it is. Maybe... If it had not happened this way, maybe I wouldn't be of help to you today. I'm saying this with a lot of love and confidence that you can still make it regardless of who your parents are, of who, of where they are, of how they raised you. It doesn't matter anyway. They were stewards. Love them anyway. You are not a mistake, not a coincidence, not a hooligan. Not a monster, not a bastard. Maybe to your parents, you were unexpected. Unwanted, unplanned before. A minute, please. Praise the name of the Lord. Maybe <laughs> you were unwanted. They didn't want you to come. They never planned it for you. You know those people so family planning. They never planned you. <laughs> Whatever the case, my dear, whatever the case. <laughs> God is a good, good. Let me take you to another verse here. There is a man in the Bible who struggled to belong. That man was David. He struggled to belong. His parents never wanted him. They never. You search. For the way how David was conceived. He was a bastard in the home. And I discovered that's why. <clears throat> that is why they normally gave him the sheep to go and take care of the sheep in the mountains. They wanted him to be eaten by lions and those bears. Because the way they got him, my dear. It was not on their plan. David struggled to belong. Until it was in chapter 139 when God revealed to him how he was conceived. He served God but with questions. He grew mature but with questions. 
He questioned his identity. He questioned, he questioned his presence. And he always questioned whether God really well, wanted him to come. Because of the way he grew up. Even when prophet Samuel came to anoint a king in Jesse's family, they said we don't have any one left. Because they thought the lions had eaten up him. He also testifies it while he's going to beat up Goliath. He says, I used to kill lions and bears. They came to kill me. I did. Samuel intended and resisted and said, ah, There is another son for this family. Just tell me, ah, all these your children, don't you have another one? And he says, okay, there is another one taking care of. They didn't want him. They wanted him eaten of the lions and bears, grabbed and destroyed. But by God's grace, he survived. And in this chapter, 139 of Psalms, let me begin on verse 13. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Now God begins to tell him what happened. That God was there. That which I told you, that God came into your mother's womb to cover you, to protect you, to keep you alive there, to form you, and to make sure you grow to his intentions. Verse 14, I will praise thee, for I am fearful and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret, and truly as a wrote in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, then as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto thee, O God! How great is the sum of them! In verse 14 he says, I will praise thee. Do you know what that means? He was hating God. Excuse me. He was hating God. Why did you make me like this? Why did you give me such parents? <coughs> oh, dear Jesus. Praise the Lord. Why did you make me like this? Why didn't my parents love me? Why did I have to suffer? They have suffered. Why did I have to go through what I went through? If you really loved me. But after God revealing to him how he formed him in heaven and how he took care of him in the womb, how he made sure I was delivered well, how he made sure he protected him from the lions and the, the bears, he told him it was me, God, who gave you that strength. No man in his own strength can kill a lion so easily like you always did. Not just a lion, but lions and bears. It was me, David. It was me, God, who helped you, David. Understand this. I love you. I call you mine. You are my precious thing. I call you my best. When I look at you, I say I am successful because my job was fully contented. And my joy is full because I made you the way I wanted. You came out the way I expected you. You are my valuable, my best valuable. You are my best treasure. You are all my life. I can't sleep. I can't even blink. I can't even slumber just for a microsecond because you are mine, mine property to take care of. I love you the way you can't even imagine. You can't fathom how much I love you. Then David says, okay. So, Kumbe, you loved me like that. Now I will praise you. Why? Because I was fearfully and wonderfully made. You know you are God's wonder. You are God's fearfulness. God feared he, after making you. He sat there and curiously wondered, what have I made? Have you ever made something and you even doubted whether it was you who did that? Not in an evil way, but in a good way. Praise the name of the Lord. He, he manufactured you 
He made you and after completing you, he sat somewhere and looked at you. There is nothing in heaven that is as beautiful as you are. There is nothing in heaven that is as handsome as you are. You know heaven is full of beauty. Beauty emanates from there. Beauty begins from there. Beauty lives there. But there is nothing as beautiful, as handsome, as excellent, as good as you are in the presence of God. That's why even God marveled after making you. Because that's what it means that you were fearful and wonderfully made. When he finished making you, he sat there and marveled and wondered, what have I done? Look, what in heaven have I done? And he wanted to show, uh, to show off to us. That's why he brought you on earth. To, he brought you on earth to show the, all the creation, to show all the creation, the, 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 the people, the trees, the mountains, and every living thing on earth. God brought you intentionally that when they look at you, they give him praise. They will wonder. You know, when those mountains and trees and the grass and the flowers and the lakes and the sun and the stars look at you, when the sky looks at you, it wonders. All creation wonders. Why did God to take, why did he take a lot of time to make you? Why did he take all his wisdom to form you? Why did he take all everything in him to make something we call you? You are not a simple thing. You are not a joking subject. You are not a simple matter. You are not just an ordinary substance. You are something which the world marvels at. All creation marvels and wonders and even fears you and fears your maker. Because you are not an ordinary thing. You are something unfathomable. Unfathomable. Fathomable. No one can comprehend in their imaginations how you really were made. No scientist can fully explain you. No philosopher can explain you. There is no genius on earth that can fully understand how fearfully and wonderfully you were made. You are God's greatest miracle. God makes a lot of miracles. He opens the blind eyes. He opens the deaf ears. He makes the dumb speak. He causes the dead to live again. He causes the lame to walk. He does a lot of miracles. He brings light. That's a miracle. He makes rivers to flow forever without running dry. That's a miracle. He made things from nowhere. God is miraculous. He has a lot of miracles. We can't count them in number. But my dear, when he looks at all those miracles, they do not surprise him. God is not surprised when a, God is not surprised when the blind eyes see. He doesn't. But whenever he looks at you, you were surprised to him because you are his best. He made you are the best project God has ever done. You are the greatest miracles. If we are to rank miracles, you are on top. You are the greatest. God did not just, you know. God, it's like you caught him off guard. It's like you came out in a way he never believed he can make. You came out something God never believed he could really make. You are a surprise to God, not in a way that he didn't expect you. He expected you. Have you ever done something and after making it, you say, eh, I didn't expect it to be so good like this. 
you are fearfully and wonderfully made. So, whoever raised you does not matter. However you were raised, it doesn't matter. Foster homes after foster homes. Homes after homes. People after people. It's okay. Do you know this man called Moses? In the Bible. All of people love that man. But do you know how he was he do you know how he grew up? Do you know how he was raised? He came on earth in the days when that king in his kingdom never wanted babies. Because he was afraid of them that maybe one of them will take his kingship. They slaughtered all the children in his days. His parents gave up on him. They made him a basket. They put him on a, a river or a lake, on a water body. They left him in the masses of those monsters in the lake or in the river, the sharks and whatever. He flowed on the waters. He grew up in witchcraft for 40 years in Pharaoh's house because he was the chief. Which doctor? He was the chief wizard. Pharaoh was the chief wizard in Egypt. He grew up there. His life was awkward. Then after escaping there, he also landed in the house of a witch doctor, another witch doctor. He got a wife from a priest in wizardry. But God knew him, and he had a purpose, like you are. You are God's greatest miracle. If they put you somewhere, and they put those beautiful trees, and those beautiful mountains and lakes and whatever, if they gather everything into a heap, and they put you and that heap of everything on earth before God. And they ask God to choose one. God will choose you. Why? Because you are greater than everything put together. Forever. You are not just a woman, not just a man, not just a girl, not just a boy. You are God's product. You are God's own, his image and his likeness. You are everything God wants. You are everything God needs to survive. You are everything that, go, that makes God happy. That you are everything that makes God boost to other creations. You are everything God ever wanted, God ever wants, God will ever want. That's why he even sent us Jesus. He sent us Jesus because he doesn't want to lose us. You see, God loves us so much that even if we choose to reject him and we go to hell, even hell will not consume us. God says, okay, they have rejected me. The devil is going to torment them. For that, you know those people in hell, the devil is tormenting them. Not for any other reason. It's like he's punishing them for not accepting the love of God. But God says, even if they reject me, they reject my love, and if they go to hell, I will make sure they will never be consumed. Because when I look at them, I look at my finished work. Even hell, fire, will never be able to finish that which I created. 
people in hell do not perish do not die they stay there alive but in pain and agony why because god is love cannot allow him to lose them we are so important to god to even such an extent that even if we choose we decide to reject his love and we end up in hell he will make sure we also stay there alive do you see these people they imprison in, in prisons and they give them a life sentence the government needs people he needs them but because they choose to reject the law they keep them there they don't kill them except a few but in heaven there is a place even for those who reject the love of god but they will stay alive though in an eternal pain god cannot allow you to be destroyed not even in hell his love for you is too much so you are all that important that god cannot allow hell fire to consume you i'm not asking you to go to hell it is not a sweet place it is a place of an eternal ever burning fire but that fire cannot consume you because it has not greater power than the love of god for you dear friend you belong you belong you belong you belong run to this man who loves you all that much don't reject his love don't resist his love god loves you forgive those parents who treated you the way they did forgive that dad who left your mom forgive your mom who left your dad Forgive yourself for running out from your home. It wasn't your fault that your mom died while giving birth to you. It wasn't your fault that your parents never loved you. They loved you and they do. But the stewardship they didn't do that right. They fell short of that. Forgive them. We are humans. We make mistakes. God loves you. You are his greatest miracle. Have you been hating yourself? Hating your parents? Hating those people who mistreated you, who abused you while growing up? Please forgive them. For God is sake, because he loves you. God loves you. He does. Too much that he cannot allow even hell to consume you away from his sight whoever will ever go to hell will stay there forever because god loves them too that's why he sends them jesus so that he can't lose them i love you too and jesus loves you too if you're not born again say this say jesus I want to belong. I want that kind of love, that heavenly kind of love. Save me now and heal me now. May God heal your emotions, your soul and your spirit and your body. I am saved, say that, I am saved. Write my names in the book of life and let me feel this your love. In Jesus name. Amen. Don't forget, I love you, and Jesus loves you too, eternally. Share this message to everyone, and ask them to share it. I love you, and Jesus loves you. If nobody loves you, just know there is a man called Pastor Paul Makanga, this black pastor, he loves you. 
And if there is one, a one who loves you in heaven, God, he does. Try him. You won't regret. In Jesus' name, I love you. Till tomorrow. Bye-bye.